And so the, the, the foundations of the early church would affect the churches and the church of God for the rest of our lives. Right? It's like when you build a house. If you don't build the cement right and you build everything on it, it's a matter of time before something goes wrong because the foundation's not right. Right? Yes. I shared with you before how years ago I lived in Almani. Me and my, my mom and my, my little brother, we lived in Almani before I was married. We lived in a house that had a bedroom, a kitchen, and a living room. That's what it had with a little restroom off to the side. It was like a shoebox, man. It was like, I don't know what you call that house. There was a door in the middle from the living room to the kitchen and a door from the kitchen to the bedroom. And this house didn't have a foundation, and we didn't know that till we moved in. It was built on wood framing and dirt. And we found out after a, a couple of storms, when the water got heavy, the house went like this. I mean, it literally went, it, and I used to always crack up because I'd, I'd get a marble and I'd, I'd put it right there in the living room and I'd watch it roll down all the way to the bedroom and just roll on its own because it didn't have any foundation. Well, you got to imagine that kind of a picture is what's going on here. The early church, God is building his church. And in those days, there were not a lot of Gentiles yet. Remember that? Mostly Jews. Uh, not a lot of people who were of different nationality. There were a few, and they were coming in quickly. They were growing, but there wasn't as many. There was many, many Jews who were believing, and many of the Jews who were believing were still young in their walk. And so they didn't always understand the teachings of the Lord, yet they believed in the Lord. So what they were doing is learning as they went. And so the teaching that was being given to them was foundational to help them build. And, and let me just put it to you this way. How many of you are aware of this? That we can't handle every level of teaching all at once. How many of you understand what I mean? It's like what Paul says in his letters when he talks about how a, a, young, a young believer is like a baby. And you, you, know, you can't cut, get a steak knife and, and a fork and cut up a big chunk of steak and put it in a baby's mouth. What happens if you do that? That baby will go, right, at first and all happy because it's flavors they don't even know. And then all of a sudden, they'll start to choke because they can't chew on it. They're not ready for it. But if you go get them a little jar of Gerber's, right, everything looks like pudding in those things. It's carrot pudding and squash pudding and broccoli pudding and pudding pudding, banana pudding, right? So you get that, and it's all really smooth, and the baby can handle it, and it's okay. And that baby needs that, right? Well, what we're about to see is a, just a, a powerful blessing and a, a, a beautiful decision made by a mature man of God. But this decision he makes is, is risky because it could appear to be hypocritical. It could appear to be a bad example. And it, and it all has to do with making sure that the early church is getting a good foundation so that what we build upon, it'll be solid and grow. Now, think of it again like that baby. That baby will turn into a toddler eventually. And that toddler will turn into a little, a, a little kid. And that little kid will turn into a teenager. And then they'll go away to, up to space for a little while. And then they'll come back when they're like 18, 19 or something. The alien years, right? Just forget that. I, we won't even talk about that right now. I just always believe something happens to teenagers. The, the body's still there. But something happens for a little while. Then they come back and they're good. They're all good. It's good. Some people's teens last a little too long because they're still out there. <laughs> Goofing around, doing things they shouldn't be doing. Anyway. And so there's a process. There's a progress. There's this development where maturity has to happen over time. There's nothing. You can't expect strength out of something that happens just like that. We live in a microwave generation. We know that. Everything's instant. 
But I promise you this, you're never going to have instant strength in Christ. He's strong, but he needs to mature us and teach us. How many know that's true? There are things that I can handle now. Me and my wife were talking about this. How there are things I can handle now that when I was a young believer, I couldn't handle it before. It just blew me away. It would mess me up. You know, I just struggle. How many of you have seen that in your own life where the problems that you face now are it's more difficult than before, but, but if you went through something early on that you go through now, you would have freaked out. It would have been really hard. Have you seen that in your life yet? Sure. But because you've been walking with God, you notice, I can handle that now. Before, I'd get mad when people gave me a dirty look. Now, it's whatever. There's some people, oh, I, nobody's going to get away with that with me. I don't care who you are. Don't look at me. Don't, don't, don't give me that. There's some people, oh, I'm sorry. You're just not going to disrespect me. You know, later on, you, you start to grow in the Lord. You start realizing, you know what? It's whatever. It's cool. I love, I love you. You'll grow. You'll, you'll, you'll get away. You'll, you'll get rid of your dirty look face. You know, you'll stop doing that eventually. And in the meantime, I'll love you until you get there. Right? How many of you could say that that's happened in your walk with God? When you first started, little things like that. Now you look back and you're like, I can't believe I used to trip on that. Yes? No? Yes. Amen. Amen. Some of you, uh, may, I don't really know. It's just I'm throwing it out there in general. But some of us, uh, when we first got saved, man, it, it hurt to give a dollar. Ow. Oh, five bucks? Man, what are you asking me for? And now you, you're generous and you give. You give tithes and offerings. Now you look back and you say, wow, why was it so hard to give five bucks? Why was it so hard? You didn't even... You look at it now, and you're like, man, it's easy now. It's actually joyful. Amen. What happened to you? How did that, how did that happen? Because God was, is working in us, developing us. But it is a process. It happens over time. Amen. So getting back to this story. How many of you remember, just a couple of weeks ago, we were teaching how the early church was growing. It was doing great. And then some of the Jewish believers started teaching something wrong. And they were messing with the church. Do you guys, does anybody remember this? Okay. If, if, you, if you think about it in succession, it wasn't that long ago in the scriptures. Like there were days and weeks or maybe weeks. Here's what happened. They started teaching the church that you had to follow the law of Moses to be saved. Does anybody remember that? Okay, now specifically, what they were teaching is you had to be circumcised. You know, here it goes. Here we go. <laughs> like I said, this is a subject that we need to, to, to work with here. So all the Jewish believers who became believers but did not know how to live for God yet and weren't free in, in grace, they were still trying to follow the law. They were teaching, oh, you got to be circumcised. It's part of the law of Moses. You have to be. And so Paul and Barnabas came and said, no, no. And James came and the, 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 the apostles and the, the elders, they got together and they said, no, they, don't put that burden of following the law on these people. Don't do that to them. It, you, Jesus paid it all. And so they got in a heated discussion. And then... This is when Paul and Barnabas got sent to the apostles to go find out. What do we need to establish here? Does anybody remember this? Hope you do. If you don't, go back and watch YouTube. So Paul and Barnabas, when well, they get ready to go and to, to go find out from the apostles, they have this argument themselves, remember, over John Mark. Does he remember that? Right? And so Paul says, I'm jamming with Silas and uh, Barnabas takes his, his, his nephew, his cousin, his second cousin or nephew, what, one or the other. But what were they going to do? They were going to go meet with the, or they were going to go encourage and all that, but remember they were supposed to go meet with the apostles, get the, the, the teaching right and bring it back. And they did that. But what was it all about? It was about following the law 
Stay with me, guys. I know that you might get bored. You might be like, what, what is this about? Focus. Focus. Stay focused. It was all about this thing about being circumcised. And the verdict was this. Jesus paid for every sin on the cross. The law was fulfilled in Christ. You no longer have to obey the law perfectly in order to be saved. You're saved because of a free gift that was given by Jesus. Now the Jews were still following the law of Moses, which if you study the Bible, you find out that God does want them to... They're the, that's their people. That's the law that God gave to them forever. And so there are certain things that God c commanded them, and they still do to this day. But understand... The gospel of Jesus Christ, the Lord came and died on the cross, rose from the dead, paid the debt, washed away the sin, opened up the heavens for us to have a relationship with God. We don't have to do anything else. We can't earn it. We just accept it and walk with him. Right? So, Paul, Barnabas, James... Peter, John, everybody was saying, go back and tell them, no, they don't have to be circumcised. Are you all following? Yes. Now you notice I'm not going to describe circumcision. All I will tell you, and I'm looking around, I, I, I don't see that well from afar, but I'm pretty sure there's no little kids in here. So every, all the adults, you kind of get it, okay? Hopefully you get it. All I will say to you is this. As we look a little further, you're going to appreciate the sacrifice a little bit more and a little bit more. And, and yeah, well, let's just say this. That is a painful experience. Nobody does it because they just feel like, you know, I'm going to make an appointment at the doctor's this weekend. What are you going to do? I'm going to go see a Dodger game. Or angel game. What are you going to do? Hey, we're going to go see the movie. Hey, me? I'm going to make an appointment to the doctor so I'm going to get circumcised. People don't do stuff like that. Because it's painful. Everybody feels uncomfortable right now, huh? You're all like, this is awkward. This is weird. Well, I'm not going to get into All I'm going to say to you is appreciate what's really happening here. It is a painful experience. Nobody does it unwillingly you do it for a reason so remember remember clearly the verdict was this you don't have to and you'll still be pleased pleasing to God because you have faith in the Lord your relationship with God is all that God requires right all right now listen to it again chapter 16 Verse 3, Paul wanted to take Timothy. Paul wanted to have him go on with him. And he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region. For they all knew that his father was Greek. Hold on, Paul. Wait a minute, Paul. What are you doing? Didn't you just get through getting in a big old argument over this, going to uh, the apostles, getting that information on what Jesus did, bringing it back and letting them know you don't have to. And the next thing you do to a guy who's already saved, he's already pleasing to God, already has a powerful testimony, already ready to go on a mission to do the work of God, and you circumcise him. Now again, you might read right over stuff like that because maybe you're just... You're not there yet. But folks, if we're going to look at what the Word of God says, then we need to get what's in it. Have you ever wondered why that part of the story is even there? We could The Lord could have easily left it out. And it, it would have been fine. We could have went on to follow the journey of Paul and Timothy and all, and, and all the amazing things that, that God does. And we wouldn't have missed it. But the Holy Spirit allows it to be there for a reason. 
not to gross people out either or to make people feel awkward and uncomfortable. It looks like hip hypocrisy. Wait, is Paul being a hypocrite? Absolutely not. There's a reason it's there. And it floors me. I studied this, studied this, studied this. I'm like, why is it there? Why? Why is that there? I don't get it, Lord. Show me. Studied it. Prayed about it. Now, I, I, I just, the Spirit, I felt like the discerning of the Spirit of God helped me understand it. But it took a while. I'm like, Lord, just reading it at face value, it looks like Paul, this mighty man of God, this apostle that we appreciate, has played the hypocrite. He did something that he told other people, you don't have to do. It looks like that. Until you understand what really took place. This is what happened. The Bible doesn't give you a bunch of detail to it, but it gives you enough to figure it out. Paul wanted to have him go on with him. He took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew that his father was Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees to keep, which were determined by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem. What was those decrees? Imagine the decrees like a letter, like an envelope. You know, we're, we're bringing the word. We're bringing that final decree of what needs to be said. What was in that decree? You don't have to follow the law of Moses. It's in their hand. And Timothy's going with them. Right? Is everybody still here or have I lost some of them? I hope not. And even if you don't get it all, don't worry. Don't worry. Get all you can. I realize that some of this is like, wow, how does this really help me in my life today? Well, hopefully you'll get, hopefully you'll get it. So come on, Timothy. Let's go. You got to get circumcised first because wh where we're going, Timothy, we're on a mission for God. We're going to go share with the people that God loves so much. And they're lost. They don't know the Lord, Timothy. And some of them who do, they think, they, they think things that, that they shouldn't think. And so, Timothy, you got to go with me. But here's the thing, Timothy. All these people, they know about you. And they know your father's Greek. See, you may not understand this, Timothy, but a lot of those guys, if they see you show up with me, they'll close their heart. They won't listen to you. They don't want to hear a word you have to say because they're still there in their minds. They're still struggling with this whole thing. And they know your mom's a Jew and that, that makes them at least pick, come and, and start to listen. But then they realize your dad's a Greek. You're not pure Jew. So why should I listen to you? Timothy, here's the deal. You don't have to be circumcised. You don't. But if you do, when we go to share the love of God with these people, it will remove the stumbling block out of their way so that they'll hear you. I know it's a lot to take in, Timothy, and I know that's a hard thing to do, but there's something more important than even the pain you go through, and that is that those people end up in heaven, that those people hear the truth, and that those people believe in Jesus and get their sins forgiven. Later on, they will learn. They will understand that this doesn't matter. But right now, they don't understand. And if we go there, they know your father's a Greek. And so they know that because they know that about you, they don't want to hear from you. But if they find out that you obey the laws of Moses, they'll open up to you. And nothing will be in the way from them so that they'll hear the truth. Timothy, it's a painful sacrifice that you don't have to do because you're already saved. You don't need to, be, to do anything to get saved. You're already forgiven. But this thing that 
you don't have to do. As hard as it is, will be a big blessing because it'll help people be open to knowing Jesus. You see, Timothy could have said, well, Paul, I appreciate that, but I have faith in Christ. I know the grace of God. I don't have to do it. It's too painful of a sacrifice. They're, they're going to have to learn it anyway, Paul, so we better just go and tell them like it is right now. And if they don't open their hearts up, oh, wow, that's their problem. Timothy could have said that. But instead, the Bible doesn't say anything about what Timothy said. Timothy's a grown man, getting back to the idea of circumcision. He's a grown man. Bible just says Paul went and circumcised him. I promise you, if a guy don't want to get circumcised, he ain't getting circumcised. I promise you, you get a pop, you're going to get, I mean, you know what I mean? You understand what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to be clean here. The Bible doesn't say Timothy thought about it and said no. The Bible doesn't say he fought Paul off. The Bible doesn't say Paul tried to force him. The Bible doesn't say that Timothy did this or that. Timothy, this young disciple and man of God, all it says is he did it. He went through the pain. He made the sacrifice. He did whatever had to be done so that people could hear about Jesus. And here's the beautiful thing. He didn't have to, but he did it. He did it. How many times do we face stuff where we don't have to do it? I don't have to come to church. I don't have to give my money. I don't have to like that person. I don't have to. How many times has God said to you, but if you will, you will love them. They will learn. They will grow. They will mature because you made the sacrifice. Because you said, you know what? I'll put up with the pain so that that person can mature. I'll wait for them. I'll love on them. I'll be patient with them. I'll deal with it. Do you see why that story's there? Amazing story. Because that's a big time sacrifice. If I'm Timothy, I love you guys a lot. But I promise you, I would not have the strength of Timothy. I'd be like, let him find out another way. Lord, I'm just being honest, and you're all looking at me with your halos. You know what? <laughs> See, here's the thing. Timothy did something that was truly painful, a true price. Sometimes you and I, here's the thing we must learn from the example of this young Timothy and Paul, because Paul didn't want to, Paul didn't want to do this, and there's one more major lesson we're going to get out right now. There's something else to learn about it. But Timothy... There was nothing in it for him. Zero. Nothing but pain. But the potential of these Jewish people who believed in God but needed to be discipled were not open to this kid unless they, because of their way of thinking, knew that he was obeying the laws of Moses. Now they could listen to him. Do, do you know that Timothy ends up becoming a pastor of some of those people, he, was, he ended up being placed as their pastor, or at least some of them. Imagine them now learning from him on a regular basis. It started with that. Timothy, there was nothing in it for him, but he was willing to pay that price. Sometimes God asks us to do things that are so much less than that. And what do we do? I'm not going to tell you what you do. I'm not your judge. I don't pre, I, I'm not standing above you or over you. you and, we are all the same in Christ. Jesus paid the same amount of blood for you and me together. The same. We're equal in value. I'm just saying to you, there are times when we, I'm speaking general and specifically for myself, where God asks us to do way less than that. And we find all kinds of reasons and excuses to say no. And at the end of the day, God's saying, but, but you don't see what could come of this if you'll just hang in there or if you'll just pay that price or you'll just go all the way. Something beautiful can come of this. But if you, you don't have to because you have your free will. You're, you're not going to lose your salvation because you don't do it. But somebody might not get saved because you 
didn't answer that call. Sometimes God asks us such little and we find a way to say no. What a sacrifice from a young man who not, there was nothing in it for him but pain. I was just, I've been, I haven't been able to share this much because it's just brewing in my heart. But I'm watching what God is doing in this church. Sunday nights and Wednesdays don't reflect it as much. And right now, a lot of people are out for different reasons because of sickness and so forth. But if you would just look through my eyes for a moment, when everybody comes to church that calls this church their home, we have to put out extra chairs. We don't have enough seats. Kids are in the kids' ministry. Chairs are full. About 150 people show up. Do you realize that this church, at one time we had about nine Bible studies. We got, uh, we, we're almost at 200 people. You realize that this church is in a season right now. How easy is it to grow from 150 to 200? Not hard at all. How easy is it to grow from 150 to 250? Not that hard. This church can become an amazing lighthouse. And it's not far. Folks, when everybody comes in this place, putting chairs out, I'm like, man, we're not going to have any room today. But everybody comes. And, and here's the thing. All it takes is for everybody who calls us their church to say, I, I want to help build it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my whole heart, I'm going to give my whole, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make those sacrifices even when it's hard. I'm going to make the sacrifices because it means that this church is open to an unbeliever, open to a young believer, open to someone to be discipled, and I get to be a part of that. And there might not be anything in it for me, but man, God's work will be blessed. You realize that this season, this, this season of this church, we have an opportunity to be, to do things that we've never done in the 21 years I've been here. We have those opportunities right now. And guess what? All it takes is for some Timothys to say, let's do it. For the sake of those souls, man, let's do it. And I'm not saying to you we don't have Timothys because we do. Timothy's, and I don't know how would you do the female version of Timothy, but we've got them in this church. We've got some, some solid believers. But can you imagine? Can you imagine if we say to God, you know what, Lord, I'm, I'm all in. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to that last little point because it doesn't take as long to explain, and my clock's running out. Tonight, so. Paul risked his own example because he knew some people wouldn't understand. Why? Wait, what are you doing? Didn't you just get through telling us? I can imagine Paul saying, you know, I know you don't understand right now what I'm doing. You don't understand. But you must understand that we must do whatever it takes to win the lost. He did not ask Timothy to sin. It's not a sin. It wasn't wrong. It wasn't bad. None of it was wrong. It was a decision that didn't have to be done and wouldn't affect him in a negative way at all. It had a great positive effect, but it wouldn't have been bad at all for Paul to ask him this. And it could look wrong to some people who didn't understand. But Paul, in all of his letters, I noticed this. He teaches something. There was, and we'll close with this. Paul said this once. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, around 20 to 25. Paul said this. I become all things to all people that I might save some. What does he mean by that? He's, let me tell you what he's not saying. He's not saying, I go and get drunk with an with a alcoholic so I could save him. He's not saying that. He's not saying, I become an alcoholic to save an alcoholic. He's not saying, 
I become a pervert to reach a pervert. He's not saying I become violent to reach the violent. That's not what he's saying. He's saying I become all things to all people that I might save some. This is what he's saying. He's saying I find a way to get a common ground. Even if I don't like what that common, even if it gives me no pleasure at all or helps me in no way, I find it. Make whatever sacrifice so I could save some, so I could reach somebody. And even if I got to change the things I like. If I got to be, you know, I don't, some people don't like sports, can't stand sports. But in order to reach someone who likes sports, hey, find out Who's, who, who's in the game this week? Find out who, who, you know, who's, gonna, who's going to the NBA finals. Well, what if I don't want to? I don't really like it. Well, what if it, what if it makes it possible for you to speak to someone and, and build a relationship to share with them about the love of God? Well, I'm sorry, but I just don't like that, and so it's just too bad. You don't have to. You see the difference between maturity and a, a level of sacrifice versus immaturity? There's a, a level there that's such a beautiful love when you put yourself on the line. And Paul even did that. He put himself on the line. He says, you know what? These Jews don't understand right now, but we will go to their level and make a decision here so that we could reach them, so that one day we could teach them you know that thing that we did? It wasn't necessary, but for you it was worth it so that you could know Jesus, so you could grow in him. Paul said, he, another place he said this, if it's at all possible, live at peace with everybody. What does that mean? That means your, your noisy neighbor that, that, that brings the mariachis at 2 in the morning and you just want to call the cops on them? Rethink that. Oh, I don't care. I don't put up with that stuff. Rethink that. What if you have a relationship with that neighbor and it's taking some time to reach them for the Lord and you call the cops and they know it's you? I, I don't care how much love of God you have and how much Bible knowledge. Guess what? They're going to say later for you, you called the cops. Even if you didn't do anything wrong, it wasn't sin, but you closed the door. We live sometimes in a level of immaturity. We close doors constantly because of our way of thinking. Paul was so much further than that. And he said, you don't have to do it, Timothy, but we will do this so that we can reach them. And it's not sin or wrong. It's just a sacrifice and a compromise that will open a door for us to share the Lord. we got to stop right there. I said I was going to close with that, but I'm just going to read the verse to close. I promise I'm not going to teach the verse. just going to read it. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decree to keep which was determined by the apostles and the elders in Jerusalem. Verse 5. Pay attention to this. So the churches were strengthened in the faith. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily. What was the fruit? What was the result of this great sacrifice? The church increased in faith. And their numbers grew daily. There's no one or nothing that could stop that from happening here. Except us. Except us saying, eh, sorry. I am who I am. Whatever. You don't like me? Too bad. Too bad. Well, that's fine. You, free will. That, it's good. It's okay. You know, you know, it's all right, but let me tell you what, what's better. What's better is, Lord, help me to love with a different level. No one's ever going to, no one here at least, will ever ask you to sin. That better not happen. <laughs> we won't ask each other to sin and do, because Paul didn't ask anybody to sin. We're not going to do that. 
But sometimes when, when there's something to be done and it takes sacrifice and it's not easy and it's for the cause, Lord, nothing's in it for us. And sometimes we got to get rid of, well, this is just me. This is who I am. And we got to say, I, 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 love, I love the Lord and I love those people who are lost. And I'm going to put up with them. <laughs> I'm going to put up with them for a while because they need me to. And eventually, I know they'll get past it and we'll grow. It'll be okay. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap if we can. Amen. <laughs>